And I can't believe we are almost at the end of our morning session uh, for uh, for my location morning. Uh, and we have Jeremy Waltfire with us uh, who came from Gilead and who will talk about safety graphics version 2.0, open source collaboration in pharma using R and Shiny. Jeremy, the stage is yours. Thank you. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Jeremy Wildfire. And um, as Bola said, I'm going to be talking about open source collaboration in pharma and specifically talking about the upcoming version 2.0 release of the Safety Graphics app. Um, all of this work is presented on behalf of the Interactive Safety Graphics Working Group, which is a sub team of the DIA and ASA Biofarm Safety Working Group, which is kind of a big group of statisticians and physicians trying to improve safety in general. Um, you can see here a list of organizations on our working group, so lots of different groups across pharma, um, large and small, in CROs, we have several academic organizations who have people contributing, and of course our friends at the FDA. Becca Kraus presented on this topic last year at RN Pharma, so I'm going to briefly recap some of the things Becca talked about, but mostly focus on what we've been doing in the last year. Um, oh, by the way, my slides are available at the link at the top of the page, safetygraphics.github.io. Just scroll all the way to the bottom and you can learn more about the team there as well. <clears throat> So Becca presented last year um, fairly recently after the version one release of safety graphics. So I'll just kind of recap how that works and talk about some of the changes in 2.0. Um, so the safety graphics package is available on CRAN, codes on GitHub. There's a link to a demo here. Generally, you're going to use it by initializing the Shiny app that's included using the code below. Once you do that, you're going to see the home page for the app. And in general, the workflow for using the app is going through these four tabs at the top of the page. So first, you're going to load up, load in your data. Um, version one of the app just used laboratory data. So you want to load your lab data in. And as you can see here, I've loaded in a few files along with the example file. And when you load in a data set, the app attempts to automatically detect the data standard if it's Atom or SDTM, which can be really nice. You can also load in data with no data standard. And after you've loaded your data, you're going to go to the next tab and you're going to configure your settings. So the main chunk of this is just doing some quick data mappings to tell the app what column goes with what um, kind of parameter that's used in your charts. And if you use Atom or SDTM data, the app will just fill this in for you. It knows that the ID column in both Atom and SDTM is U sub ID. Um, if you load in your own data set, you know, the Excel file that the lab sends you, then you'll have to do this by hand, but it really goes pretty quickly. Um, just usually takes a minute or two to do it. Once you've done uh, loaded your data and kind of filled in that settings page, you can go over and start exploring all the various interactive charts we have. So this first one is an implementation of an EDISH chart called the HEP Explorer. And there's several others that you get um, all loaded off the same data and settings page. Once you've got your charts running, you can go back and forth between the settings page and the graphics page and, and customize them. So for example, you could add a treatment group or you can add filters and there's various other kind of configurations you can do. And then finally, you can export your charts to a standalone HTML file, kind of all wrapped up in a, in a single document that can be shared really easily and doesn't even require the user to be running R. OK, so let's talk about Safety Graphics version 2. We've been hard at work on this for the last year or so, and um, we're hoping to release it on CRAN by the end of the year. You can play with the prototype on, on um, now if you want to load it from GitHub using the code below. So some lessons learned from v1 of the app, which has been out for a while now. There's some things that we think worked really well. We really like loading data and configuring it once, and then getting all of those charts to, to load automatically. So we had six or seven charts in the initial version of the app. Um, flexible data standards are really good. I was really surprised by how often people wanted to load data with no data standard. So I think that was really valuable. Um, 
Shiny and in particular Shiny modules really helped make this possible. And the exported HTML reports we think worked really well. There were some things we knew needed updates when we went live with version one. So version one focused on lab data only. It was primarily focused on HTML widgets and interactive graphics. Um, and we wanted to expand that to other types of charts as well. Adding new charts was hard in version one. It was possible. We wrote a very long vignette about how to do it, but I'm not sure anybody other than Becca and myself ever actually did it. So we wanted to make that easier. Um, we had a lot of tests in version one, but it was really for the helper functions about um, detecting the data standards and things like that, not in the app itself. So we wanted to improve that in version two. And finally, saving customizations for a given study was again, possible, but not trivial in version one. So V2 is going to improve on all of that, which is great. Um, I'll talk more about these improvements that are coming in version two. Our original plan was to do kind of an agile series of improvements to the app and do version 1.1, 1.2. It didn't really work out. Instead, we ended up doing a, really a refactor of the entire code base and added a lot more modularity. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. So, this is a screenshot from version two of the app. Now you can see we have multiple data domains that can be loaded in. And that ended up being a lot harder than I thought it would be. Um, so version one of the app had a module for every tab, basically with a few little exceptions. In version two, we added a lot more modularity. And this really um, helped with a lot of making the app more flexible. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. So. There's still one mapping tab module that kind of captures the whole of the data mapping process, but nested within that, there are domain level modules. So there's three of those. There's column level modules that um, capture kind of all of the information for a single column of data. So like here, you can see we're mapping the measure column in the labs domain, and you also need to map some field level information for labs. And then finally, there's the select modules, which is just captures each single select element. And having these modules this way means we can really do a lot of automated testing and we can generate that settings page basically with any set of data um, that we want to use. Any domains can be added pretty easily using this fully modular approach. Um, I could probably talk about the automated testing for a full presentation, so maybe next year. So this modular approach empowered some really nice um, kind of unexpected efficiencies for building more into the app in version two. So I'll talk about that with the last couple of minutes. One thing we added uh, really quickly was a shared set of filters that work across all of the charts. So you can now filter your data um, based on the demographics information. And this was implemented using an existing module from the Equis package. I might have said that wrong, apologies if I did. So I just plugged in this module to the app and it, it just worked. I would, honestly, this was always on the roadmap, but I was thinking it wouldn't go into version two because I thought it was gonna take too much time. And using the existing module, we did it in an afternoon. So I was really happy with that. And then really, I buried the lead a little bit here. The biggest thing is that these improvements empower us to make a lot more charts in the app. So we can use charts that have multiple domains. So A's, demographics, and treatment data in a single chart here. You can also import charts. So again, you just load your data once, you configure it with the settings page once, and then you get all of these charts really easily. This is a static plot created with the tendril package. I added some things from tplyr after looking at some of uh, Michael's stuff the other day. So here's their demographics example loaded with the DT, DT package and um, the shift table rendered with cable extra. We've also been building new charts. So the Hepatic Explorer that I showed you at the beginning has had a lot of additions based on our kind of robust collaboration with physicians. So um, we've added some cutting edge biomarkers here and done some other nice things. All of this is captured in the really robust clinical workflows that we create. So um, there's actually an 85 page document that explains exactly how to use this tool with all of the kind of medical literature and use cases built in. In a similar vein, we're building a nephrotoxicity explorer, which I think is, is going to be really exciting. I think this is new. I'm not aware of a, of a graphic quite like this one. And this is based on another extensive um, review of the medical literature. 
by our clinical lead. And finally, we have a volcano plot that'll be released with version two. This was a nice, another nice example of collaboration across organizations. The prototype was built by a team at BI and then additional shining coding by Isaac Zhao at Alchemies. So in conclusion, you know, I think collaboration in pharma can really work. I think this is, we collaborate in a lot of different ways on ISG, across companies, across functional areas, across technologies, a lot of what we, the charts are actually written in JavaScript, um, across sectors of biotech, collaborate with regulators and with package developers, and we'd love to collaborate with you. So certainly reach out and let us know if you'd like to get involved, fully open source, and uh, we'd love more folks involved. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeremy. I remember last year talking version one, so I'm really happy you guys came back uh, to our pharma this year to give us, uh, you know, the amazing updates that you've done. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we do have one question from Bella. Mm -hmm. uh, so the question is: Suppose the atom data sets are already in a database, would Safety Graphics handle it or can't handle it? Yeah, I actually cut that slide from here, but in version two, you can just pass in data that you've loaded from any data source and then initialize the app with the data. So you no longer have to kind of click and navigate to a file on your computer, but you just load, you, you pass the data into the function when you initialize the app. So in version one, it's, it's possible but not trivial to use data from a database. In version two, it'll be very straightforward. All right, thank you. Uh, so there is no more questions uh, in the chat. So thank you again, Jeremy, for uh, giving us this wonderful presentation. Thank you. Thank you.